watching Samantha Grimes TV, a place dedicated to the total wellness of the total woman. All right, family, do me a huge favor. If you like natural hair and beauty content, if you like healthy lifestyle content, if you like everything dedicated to you being the best you you can possibly be, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. And if you've already done that, then hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any future uploads. All right, family, if you are a newbie, <laughs> my name is Samantha Grimes. I am a professional life strategist as well as a creator and an overall mompreneur. As well as I'm a published author, I recently wrote a book called Feel So Good to Be Loved, 21 Days of Discovering the Authentic Love of God. Please go ahead to Amazon or Kindle to pick that up. As well as if you would like to book a session with me one-on-one, -on -one, whether that be a life coaching session, a faith-based counseling session, or a little bit of natural hair coaching, whatever you're interested in, then please go ahead and visit my website at www www.sgls.info. Once again, that's www.sgls.info. And I look forward to working with you. All right, family. So I'm excited about this video and I think this video is going to really help you. I think it's going to be a tool that you keep in your bookcase, you keep in your arsenal um, for just many different seasons and situations in your life. Um, I'm talking about letting go. Um, and I'm specifically dealing with letting go when it comes to other people. Um, a lot of times we don't know when to let go um, and or how to let go and, and what that really means and what that really looks like. And sometimes we don't realize that that's even the answer in which that we are seeking. Okay, so I want to just be very frank with you, give you guys some easy points. We're going to go into the word a little bit and I'm going to use the scriptures to kind of uh, back up and show you uh, just a great example of when it's time to do that and how to process that. So without further ado, let's get into this video. But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men, so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and it tore. Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. He who is in the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a human being that he should change his mind. Saul replied, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders and for my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel went back with Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, bring me Agag, king of the Amalekites. Agag came to him in chains and he thought, surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so will your mother be childless among women. And Samuel put Agag to death before the Lord at Gilgal. Then Samuel left for Ramah. But Saul went up to his home in Gebeh of Saul until the day Samuel died. He did not go to see Samuel again, though Samuel mourned for him and the Lord regretted that he made Saul king over Israel. 
All right, family, so I wanna go ahead and break down just a little bit of what we just read. So Saul, the current king of Israel, was given a job by God, okay? And his job was to go and to destroy the Amalekites, okay? Leave nothing, leave no sheep, leave no oxen, and above all, kill everybody, including their leader. But he was disobedient to that decree, and he decided to take the leader a hostage or as a prisoner, and he took the best oxen and the best lambs for himself and for his kingdom, which was not what God told him to do. And so when Samuel confronted him about what it is that he did, he lied and said, no, I, I was obedient. So Saul, I mean, so Samuel went ahead and shared with him everything that the Lord had already revealed to him that he did wrong. So Saul admits to his transgression, but then says, hey, but please go with me so that I may look good before the people. Okay. That was his whole thing. He cared more about how he looked before the people than he cared about God. This isn't really about that today. What I want to focus in on is the hard truth that we were dealing with a character that's very similar to maybe some people that we encounter in our life. People who just do not want to change. I know everybody's had that experience. There are people in your life you want better for them. You want better for their life. You want better all around. You want them to stop hurting you. You want them to stop hurting other people. You want them to just chill. You, you, want, you desire that so badly, but they do not want to change. Pay attention to the story. Samuel told him of his error. He told him what he needed to be repentant about. He revealed all those details and yet at the last hour he was still concerned about the people because he was not actually convicted and he did not want to change. Sometimes we are still carrying the weight of responsibility that it is your job to fix people. It is your job to get people to want to do better. It is your job to keep talking to them, to keep teaching them, to keep ministering to them, to keep reaching. And sometimes God is calling for you to stop and say they don't want to. It's not that they don't know how. They're not confused. They're not unsure. They just don't want to. So my first point here is that I want you to do exactly what Samuel did. He turned around and he walked away from it. Sometimes it's going to be your biggest, the biggest win you have in the situation is your ability to tell, you know what? I'm walking away from this. I'm not going to keep trying to figure out how I'm going to fix this person. No, I'm going to now Take my hands off, not because you don't have hope for them, not because we stop praying for people, not because we stop loving people, but we have to have room for God. Is that the Bible says that Samuel did not see him again until he died. Now, I know the situations with us are not as extreme, but one thing that he did, he didn't just walk away from it. He let it go. You know, we talk about the concept of letting go underneath the guise of forgiveness. But sometimes it's more than just forgiveness. You have to let them go, as in let them go their own way. Let them go to God. That's really the point of all of this. You've done all that you can do in your human strength. You've done all that you can do, do as a leader. You've done all that you can do as a family member. You've done all that you can do as a friend. You can do all that you can do as a coworker. You've done all that you can do. So now let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Surrender to Christ, all of it. How you feel about it, what you want for them. Like I, get, like I said, we never stop praying for people. We never stop loving people. We never stop believing for people. But we are letting go of the responsibility. Sometimes we are doing things that are not in our job requirement. And it's not being cold. It's not uh, acting like people are. No, it, it's, it's understanding that we don't give God the opportunity to do anything about it. See, either he's going to have or we have it. Either he's going to have it or we're going to have it. So if we have it, we can only do what our human, limited, created being self can do. But when God has it, there's nothing that's impossible. So you have to let them go. It looks bad. If you want to intervene, let it go. Give it to God. Give it to God as many times as you need to give it to God. Keep pouring it out to him. Keep interceding for them. But Keep your hands to yourself. 
keep your hands to yourself. Because if they're gonna change, it's gonna have to be because of them, not because of you. If they're gonna change, it's gonna be because of Christ, not necessarily because of you. Do your warring in prayer, but keep your hands to yourself. Let it go. There are things in life that we have to grieve. There are gonna be things in life we have to lament. There are gonna be things in life that we have to um, process out, okay? Um, and sometimes, that is the missing piece in your struggle maybe with people is that there is something there is a, a maybe a hope you had for people maybe something you believed for you know maybe you you believe that one day they were going to change and you know be a better boyfriend maybe they were going to change and be a better parent maybe they were going to change and be a better friend maybe they were going to change and be a better if you fill in the blank you know your life but they don't want to change. They've decided. This is where they are now. And sometimes you have to give yourself permission to grieve who you wanted them to be. This does not mean that we've lost hope for people. It means right now they're not there. And we have to process out that disappointment. We have to process out that disappointment. We have to process the fact that we had to let them go. We had to process the fact that you talking to them was just not enough this time. You have to process the fact that maybe you're just doing it in prayer now and not being as active as maybe you once were. Maybe you were never supposed to be as active and so you have to process that. But give yourself an opportunity to grieve your disappointment. Give yourself an opportunity to process, to deal, and to come to peace with what you and God are now doing. It's not that God's not gonna come through. I've seen so many testimonies of people that everybody said they ain't gonna never change, they ain't gonna never get together, and they, did, they got transformed, but it wasn't on your timetable. It was on his. And they had to have peace in the meantime. God is not in the business of you being pissed or you being hurt or you being disappointed or you being stressed or you being broken all while you wait for this person to get it together. No, 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 no. God says, oh, you get to have peace. You get to have rest. You get to have confidence in me while you wait on the way I want to do this. So if you don't take anything from this video, if you want to really let it go, let yourself grieve what you thought it was going to be and believe God for what you have not seen. All right, family, talk soon.